So who were your first cellmates out of all the first arrest? Um, I didn't know. I don't remember. I don't know their crimes. Mm. Um, I didn't ask. People either, I think it's an unwritten rule in jail. People either tell you their crimes or they don't and you don't ask. And I, I knew that from, uh, there was a YouTube channel I liked, Big Herc 916. Oh yeah, he we're runs friends a, with Big Herc. Yeah, yeah me too, yeah, I speak yeah, to him. Yeah. He runs a series called Fresh Out. He yeah. tells you about prison and he's talking about American prisons, but I think the psychology is pretty much the same. If you're a child monster, Ooh. people will know and that's it. People will know if you're a child monster. And besides that, you don't ask people's crimes. So the first people I was with, I didn't know how to navigate the prison system very well. I was extremely paranoid. In fact, I slept in a plastic chair for the first few days. Did you? Because I assumed, I knew none of these people could, could fight me. So I assumed if I'm going to get attacked, it's going to be a night. So what I would do is I'd wear my, my rubber soled sneakers and a pair of sweatpants. And I would tuck my sweatpants into my socks to stop the roaches crawling on my legs. And I would run the shower and the sink and these people weren't particularly clean. And I'd make sure the floor was quite wet because if you ran the shower enough, water would leak all over the floor. Apart from the corner by the door where it was dry. And I'd sit in this plastic chair with a sweater at first because I hadn't bought any pillows yet. P pillows and blankets don't come as standard, by the way. You have to get hold of those somehow. So I'd roll up my sweater, put it on my shoulder. And I'd sleep in this plastic chair and my sneakers like this because I thought if I wake up in the middle of the night, I'll stand up straight, and then I'm fighting a barefooted man on a wet surface with my feet planted on my, with my rubber shoes. And I was very paranoid about getting attacked. So that's how I first slept. But they all turn out to be pretty nice guys. And I've rectified a lot of people's problems for them since getting out of jail. Famously, there was one man who, uh, no kids, he's facing 13, 14 years for allegedly smuggling. He'd or he was in his 40s. He'd already done probably 15 years of his life in jail already. But he had this niece, it's his brother's daughter or sister's daughter, I believe. And this niece is everything to him. It's all he cares about. He talked about his niece. He had pictures of his niece in the jail. And in Romania, you don't have to worry about anyone getting pictures of, like, like there's no, like the child mothers are dealt with properly, probably worse so than many other countries. Right. So, so he had pictures of this little girl in his room. I'm just saying that so no one thought he was a weirdo. Like he really cared about his niece. So his niece turns out has type one diabetes and needed an insulin pump. And obviously they're completely flat broke, uh, come from a gypsy family out in the villages. An insulin pump was, was, I'll tell you how much it was, it was 2,700 euros to get the top of the line insulin pump fitted and whatever. And he was crying his eyes out, you know, because she has to take all these injections. Her life's very miserable. And I said, look, when I get out of here, I'm going to fix the problem. And he was literally in tears. This 40 something year old man was in tears. And, and the first thing I did when I got out within 48 hours Within 48 hours, I'd sent people up there and the insulin pump, the little girl got it and she's, she's much happier now. Oh, God so, bless you, man. Yeah, so, so you, you well, speak to the other prisoners, but it was more, I'm trying to fix their problems almost. I'm like, well, what's 2,700 euros to me? I spend more than that on lunch. This, would, this is this guy's single number one crushing problem on earth right now. And I could fix it for less than I spend on lunch. So yeah, I was literally writing down names for taking phone numbers from people and stuff and stashing numbers away. And I was just rectifying people's problems when I got out because you know, why not? It's, uh, uh, this guy, you can look down on him and say, oh, he's a drug smuggler and he's a bad person. And yeah, drug smugglers, I guess are bad people and I'm very anti-drug myself, but there's a little girl out there somewhere who needs an insulin pump. And I heard the story from him. So yes, I will go fix the problems. I'm not going to fix any of his personal problems, you know, yeah. but uh, certainly I'll, I'll, I'll lend a hand to these people. So it was a lot of sad stories talking to the person. That's really touched me.